this is like the greatest idea ever. May very, I pick him cool. up? Yeah, you already mm-hmm. did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're it's so cute. funny. All the dog people were like, Caesar's coming up? Like, <laughs> what do you mean Caesar's coming up? All right, everyone. Welcome to Out and About. It is Tuesday, April 16th. It is Nan and Trish recording remotely because we have um, what I would consider my white whale guest on the show today, and that is Caesar Milan, dog, t- dog trainer extraordinaire, the dog whisperer. If you're a dog person, you know him, you love him. Um, and it was a fantastic conversation. So we will get to that interview in a little bit. But before we do, uh, Nana Bones, how are we doing? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I had to stay in the house today because there's a heat advisory here in New York City. 80 degrees. I mean, 80 degrees today. So, you know, as a senior citizen and um, an overweight woman, I'm not allowed to leave the house because there is a, a heat advisory. So I do have, I'm here. I have my air conditioning on. I have two cold beverages on ice, either side of the nightstand and I'm wearing, I'm nude from the waist down. So. I'm well, well the, 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 there's a heat advisory. The chub rub will start a brush fire. So that's what we, that's, that's what we got to watch out for. It's and I don't know I'm on a set seven yet. I've, I you know you have to use on a set seven cream on my thighs, anti-chafing. Monastat seven. Do you really have your AC on already, you psycho? It's eighty degrees, of course. Oh my god! I keep my oh. house a cool sixty at all times. Your house is out of control. Cold. Actually, your house feels very nice. Like the, even in the winter, like leaving the door cracked. But also, what was I going to say? I store. I have to store perishables in my bedroom. So yeah, <laughs> there's no fridge. It's just on the counter. You keep milk on the counter. You keep it all all on the counter. Um, I haven't paid an electric bill since I moved into my apartment. I know they sent me one another that was $800. Uh, so they're just going to send me one for like seven months. They're just like six waiting months, every six months or you can pay, you can go, you can, it's, it's, your, it's your, your, uh, it's your responsibility to go on and pay it every month. But it says there's nothing on my account. It's like con ed. I go on and it's like, you have nothing. So I'm like, is just my old neighbor getting billed for this? No. Did you ever sign up for it again? Oh yeah. So no, they'll get, they'll get a six month probably thing. I would just call them. But yeah, I got, I, I, I moved in in November. I just got a bill for $800. Like, your your air conditioning bill in the summer is going to be fucking nutty because you're going to keep that place so cold. Uh, air yeah, you're nanana, nanana, well, nanana's never been one to never want to suffer in the heat. Um, speaking of heat, Joey and I were in Missouri over the weekend with our good friend Caitlin Bristow at the Blue Note in Columbia, Missouri. Um, we performed; it was very fun. Huge shout out to Caitlin from the Off the Vine podcast and the Bachelorette and Dancing with the Stars um, and the Internet for inviting us. That was very fun. I had a good time. Yeah. Um, what did you think? Of, I mean, Columbia, Missouri, definitely not an ideal vacation spot, but well, I was we were going and so I'm on the plane and I got the Wi-Fi signal and all, um, all my fans are writing to me saying, Joe, did you know where you're going? I was going to Riley Strain's college where he, where he, where he, where he went to college, where I'm missing from, yeah. anyway, you know, that's where he was enrolled in school. And I had no idea I was going there. So that was very emotional for me. Um, kind of going back to where it all started. Um, but and we went yeah, out to. I, was, I don't remember the town much. All we saw was the, the Hilton Garden Inn, and then we were in alleyways the rest of the night. And then I went home the next day. <laughs> we were the we went. Joey and I went to a bar. A uh, it was so it turns out it was Parents Weekend. Now Nan and now Nan and Trish went to the. They go here's the bar. You gotta go to here's the bar. We're like all right, we'll show up. We From showed my up. house. We met the owner. Everyone was very nice to us. Everyone was awesome at the my house bar. But we showed up. And all the parents look like they were our age, and the kids look like they were the kids at that school look like they were probably fifteen years old. I mean, they that were. was out of control. But I don't know how like they, how all those kids go into those bars. No, no one in the bar was twenty one. No <laughs> like, one. Like, it I was. was, I, was I, talking, I was talking to the people that work there. I said, "How did, don't you, have, as a business owner and as a, as, a, as an entrepreneurial woman, I was like, how don't you? I must, you must, and I, as, as, a, as a shady uh, family member of a mafia members." It's like who? How are, you have to be paying the cops off? It's all in, and everyone's about someone. It's like so. I said, I said, are you guys paying the cops off? Like, how don't you? These there's there's literal children in here. Well, we found out that the owner of the bar was a queen. So, yeah, but, the queens love money. So he's probably they probably. I don't understand how all college towns have it. I mean, it, it seemed like such a normal thing. I've never been to a college bar before, so it's like I, no, not really. So no. I said. So I don't understand how they're serving le- how they're serving all these college kids, knowing they're underage. They turn the other way. I think honestly, like, yeah, yeah, but that's like you can't. It's, it's it's like not like one or two of them. It's it's hundreds and hundreds of eighteen year old kids. But I think if like they just turn the other way because like we need business, and the cops are like, "Fuck it, you're in college, you're gonna drink anyway, as long as you're not driving." Like, go in, have a fucking drink, and but come that's, out. that's has that that has to be the rule in every college town, though, doesn't it? 
So like when you ask a college student, you're going to you're going to bars and they have, they have fake IDs. Like how are they doing? Yeah, it? yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you, you walk ID. up, and it's like the bouncers know. So it's like every once in a while they'll take someone and be like, oh, you can't, or they'll take their ID and be like, have a nice night. But I think for the most part, they just want you to buy those three dollar beers or or whatever it was. Because when uh, I turned eighteen, my it was legal drinking age was eighteen when I was when I was young. No, it wasn't. Oh, shut the fuck up. Imagine <laughs> the drinking age. Well, but for our parents' age, it was 18 in college. I mean, you can send them off to war, but they can't have a beer. Am I right? Right, yeah. It's very sad to say. Yeah, I'm just very confused on how that operation works. Illegally. Um, I don't know if I'll ever be going back to Columbia, Missouri, though. I think, I that, may, I think that may be my one and done. Unless I enroll in undergrad again. Should we go get an undergrad degree? Live in the dorms? I don't even have a re oh my god my flowers did I don't even have a regular degree. Well, you have the Kathy School of Cosmetology. I mean, that Kathy counts. School of Cosmetology. Kathy School of Cosmetology. Um, live shows coming up. Yes. We're less than two. We're two uh, 15 days out. So we're about two 15 16, 17 days out. So we're about two weeks out. We're very excited. Uh, make sure you get Atlanta. Austin is going to be awesome. Those are the first two stops. Then we're off a month and then we start picking it up again. But we're trying to sell as much of those as possible. So go to nowshewilltour.com and uh, purchase your tickets. You think Cesar Milan will be there? Um, no, I don't think so. He's got his hands full. He's, he's, um, I wonder how much you, sh oh, we, we talk about it here, but we never guessed how much it was. What we're, you're going to see, we asked Cesar, Trish asked Cesar, how much is it you think, how much we think it is for a personal appearance for him to like train your dog? Yeah. I'm going to say it's upwards of 35,000 per session. Oh, yeah. He told us before he came to our show, we're like, what have you been up to? He goes, I was at, I was training the Queen's Corgis. Then I went to the Saudi Royal Family and now I'm on out and about, now I'm on out and about. Yeah. Where he was training Nana on a, on leash. Nana's been, Nana's been biting her leash lately. So he had to go ahead and put a pincher collar on her to keep her off. I thank God you'll see. Um, I, you know, I don't think you already you know that I'm, I'm like, um, I'm the human version of Noah's Ark, honey. The 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 animals just come to Nana. They 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 felt a motherly instinct. They know that I have I have I have many teat ready to serve. <laughs> yes, yes. They, they know where their mother is. So you'll see, you know, but no surprise that I, they took to me like like a. I was so jealous. They were sitting on your lap. I like, and then the little Shih Tzu was going around my legs. I wanted to pick the Shih Tzu up so bad, but I was afraid to do. Like, I'm sure Caesar is. You didn't really understand like the fanfare Caesar has, but I think you got it when they came in. He has like a cult following, and so I was like, I've been watching him for years, and I was so afraid to do the wrong thing when the dogs came in. Yeah, so trying to do what Caesar told me, like no talk, no touch, no eye contact. Joey's like, come here, baby, like right away. And I have them. I'm, I I have the I have the dog like this. I'm like, I was like, can I pick him up? He goes, oh well, you already did. I said, oh. Yeah, exactly. Um, checking him up. Um, there's some scandals going on. I want to talk about very quickly. Yes, of course. Wait. No, she's a scandalous queen. You have a hat with a gun on it. That's concerning. This is honestly what I found on the ground. I don't. I, I just. I don't want my 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 wig. My wig. Imagine here. you take you take your hat off. A long, flowy human hair wig pops down. <laughs> Shake it out. Shake and oh, go. Coachella is going on right now. What do you think about yes. Coachella? Travis Kelsey and oh, there's my mother. Um, and Tyler Swift were um they were they were there in the audience. Um oh and uh Teresa Giudice got a picture with her. A Teresa Giudice is at the is at Coachella with Taylor Swift. How can she see the artist through that hairline? She got to part it over her eyes. She had a cowgirl head on. Um, no, there was other news that there was other news out of the celebrity world. Justin, oh, Justin Bieber and Jaden Smith gave each other a nice up, yeah. smooch. They're hooking up. I think that's for Coachella. Or, you want me to get my Coachella take or you want to tell yours first? Well, you can, but then I have to talk about amputation, but you can go first. Okay. Here's the thing about Coachella. Coachella is dead. Music festivals, as we said on this show, are dead. It's tired. It's played out. It's too hoity-toity. It's too glamping. It's not real. Coachella is not a music festival. It's a place to go to get photographed where you go stay at an influencer house and you post whatever they ask you to post. I think the whole thing is tired. The whole thing is played out. The musical guests aren't as good as they used to be. And it went from one of these things where it was like a fun kind of culty, like you didn't really know about it, to so mainstream. It's like, well, I'm all about mainstream. It's just too much and everyone is doing too much. Enough with the Coachella. That's my take. Okay. Um, I, don't really care the way. I don't care the way, but you know how, how if everyone here listening, how I know how I feel about amputation. So my biggest fear besides um, sweet potato fries. Um, 
John Wayne Bobbitt famously had his penis chopped off by Lorena Bobbitt. Of course. Threw it in the field. Well, his bad luck didn't end there. Now he stepped in some, he's, he's, he dipped his toes in the pond of a, of a rancid bacterial infection. Now he has all his toes amputated. Did he really? I don't think all of them. But he had at least two toes. He has his toes amputated. So it's like it's it's like fi final destination with that queen. I think for she's a chopped queen. She's a chopped queen. She she, she is a chopped. Queen. No, she's been she's been snipped. She can't escape the chop, mama. The um, you guys, a lot of you listening, I'm sure know who that is. I don't know. I, I don't know. This is in the '80s. Yeah, Lorena Bobbitt, and what was the husband's name? John Wayne Bobbitt. She caught him cheating. She went in. She chopped his cock off as he was asleep with scissors and threw it into a field. Now they he were hard shears. Garden shears. That's right. Now she, I believe, fetched the dick and they reattached it, and then he did porn. Or am I making that? Yes, up? that's correct. Okay. I the, mean, I think he didn't the, fetch it. She told him where it was. They told him where it was. the The rescue team had to go get it. Had to get a bloodhound out in the field to sniff that thing down. He was already a there on her knees, uh, <laughs> trying to double that the, the amputated cock. No. So they um. Yeah, so he reattached it, then he did porn, but now, yeah, now the luck, luck struck, bad luck has struck again. Well, I mean, the bloodhound was able to find it because he was uncircumcised, so it smelled like pimento cheese. So they were able to locate it pretty quick. No, that was wild. Lorena Bobbitt. I haven't heard the name Lorena Bobbitt in, since like middle school. I think you can watch this. Everyone do yourself a favor. Google uh, Lorena Bobbitt's husband's porn. That's that'll get you going. Another great story I haven't heard in a long time is Joanne Buttafuoco. Uh, the Buttafuoco cat scandal, the Long Island Lolita, was was a big scandal back then. I love yes. that. Tori Tell Spelling, about that. Tori Spelling played her, I think, in um in one of the, the shock documentaries. Um, Drew Barrymore played her, and uh, like there was like ten different um, what was her name? What was it, Buttafuoco? Um, what was that about? So Joey Buttafuoco and his wife Joanne Buttafuoco were husband and wife. He owned a, a, a water body shop. And um, so Alexa, oh, sorry, what's her name? Alexa, who shot Joanne Buttafuoco? From AppCentral.com. On May 28, 2017, Willie Homer Peterson, 329 of York. This is better up. Let me look it up as you go. You tell the story. It hurt. Her name was. What's her name? What are you talking about? Amy Fisher. Sure. Amy Fisher. That's what it was. Amy Fisher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Amy Fisher was the other woman who shot Botafuco, right? She was a young girl. She was a teenage girl that, that he was hooking up with. She was like 17 and he was hooking up with her. And then she wanted to, she, she wanted the, she wanted to be, be with him. And um, we don't know if he like hired her, but she never died. Joanne. Thank God. She just got injured and um, to one side of her body. But yeah, Joe, uh, um, Amy Fisher went to the front door and shot her in the head. And she's alive. She's alive, yeah. I think she's. I mean, I was, I don't, she could be dead from old age because that was like 25, 50 years ago. Did you ever watch this show on Netflix? I told you about. It's called Unlocked. Vinny might have seen I it. I just watched it. Yeah. With the prison. If you need something to watch, I know I talked about this last show, so I'll give it quick. It is about prisoners who they all of a sudden open the doors, and it's a documentary, and they have to like create this community on Netflix. It's absolutely fascinating. Sorry. Joey, Joey and I are trying to get on season three. We want to be locked up in there and see if we can kind of take control of the house. They have pod bosses. You could be the pod mother. You could tell people how to how to behave. You could help hand out food. You could do their laundry. This seems like a dream for you, honestly. Well, I didn't get very far. I mean, I got to where it was like where they, they opened the doors like day two. They were they'll hang out. And one guy was like trying to act like he was the den mother. And then everyone else is like, you know, the younger <laughs> guys like, fuck these guys. It's like, you know, they're gonna, you know. It was just it was very interesting to see. I'd like to see it on a bigger scale and I would like to see more murders, but the violence was, I don't understand. Like, so they have fixed cameras where they're like able to zoom around on remote control. And then they just have people just cameramen just in there walking around with the camera. Is that not the most dangerous thing? I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I think they're like in the, they're like GoPros, like connected to the, like in a, probably like a secure box in the wall. But then they also have like regular camera people like walking around, which is sketchy as fuck. Well, I mean, if there's a there's a female officer yeah. in there, it's as, as as in danger as a a liberal cameraman. I mean, as a Nat Geo cameraman, I mean, you know, if I was a female officer there, I'd be hooking up with all the guys. And you saw did you, there's one guy that you hook up in that in that group. There was. He was stoners. Which one? The two stoners. 
Oh, the two stars. I the, love them. They're the best. They are. Do you know what? what I, like, you I like Randy. I like Randy, the, like the the one who works yeah. there. Who's going around? Uh, true story. True story, Randy. Yeah, I like him because he's got spunk and he's up or down. He's like going through and he kind of like he works hard and wipes all the tables down. But he also um feels like he's like the the matriarch of the group. But then the two stoners are the funniest. It's like God, the fucking cops are coming. Hide that shit. And then hide that the, hooch. They're all doing they doing their own tattoos in that room. And there's like two like fucking like tweaked out stoners but they're so funny like it's like they remind me of like dumb and dumber like cheech and chong or like yeah, they look insane classic duo of like two like dumb blind leading the blind one they're of them has the most, the most famous arrest stories in florida history the shorter guy history, do they kill people no he's a drug addict the shorter guy and he has one of the most famous arrest stories in florida history he was on acid he took 25 tabs of acid he ran up to a pet store in the middle of the night yes, punched, yes, snakes. punched yeah. the window out started ran out of the thing with snakes one of the big snakes was wrapped around his stomach as he was running from the cops. He went to climb a fence. The snake tightened up and he passed out covered in snakes high on acid. And he was sentenced yeah. to six years in the state penitentiary. He got six years for stealing a bunch of snakes. What if he's trying to save them? Oh, uh, I think he's got a rap on him. I think it was probably a, probably a fourth, fifth strike. You're out kind of deal. I wonder if Caesar Milan can communicate with snakes. You think, you think his, his thing translates. If who, if who, oh, oh, Caesar Milan? Yeah. Yeah, I think he can, with any kind of any kind of animal, I think he can speak to. Well, he was able to speak to us very well. I'm telling you guys, this was so fun for me. I've been such a fan of Caesar. You guys are going to love the interview. If you're a dog person, you're going to get a ton of information. And if you're a uh, Nan and Trish person, um, you will see us at our best, our most well-behaved. And uh, any final thoughts going into Caesar, Joey? Um, No, um... There's not. Thank you for joining us, Caesar, and uh, you'll enjoy these little, these little uh, squirrely dogs we found. Okay, here's Caesar Milan. Hey, Out and About listeners, I'm here to tell you that there is no reason to panic the next time you're searching for the perfect gift. Now you can use Gift Mode on Etsy. Gift Mode on Etsy takes the stress out of gifting so you can find the perfect item for anyone and any occasion. It's easy. Just tap Gift Mode on your Etsy app or on Etsy.com. And then just answer a few short questions about who you're shopping for and what they like. And the gift mode will instantly gives you a curated gift ideas based on hundreds of personas. There's a lot of pressure around gifting. I usually have a hard time thinking of gift ideas. And sometimes I get super stressed out to find the perfect thing. But now with gift mode on Etsy, I search hundreds of gifting options for all different personas and to find so many more incredible items from all different sellers. Now it's simple to find gifts made by independent sellers for all the people in your life. So whether you need a housewarming gift for the beauty guru or a birthday present for the fashionista, gift mode has got you covered. Need to find the perfect gift? Don't panic. Try gift mode on Etsy now. All right, guys. This guest is my personal <laughs> white whale. I am so excited. Joey's glowing because he has the dog on okay. himself right now. Um, we're here with the dog whisperer, Caesar Milan, celebrating 20 consecutive years on TV. Season four of Caesar Milan, Better Dog, Better Human, Better Human, Better Dog. Exactly. And you also have your new product here, which we're going to talk about. Yes. Um, Thank you so much for coming on. But thank you for watching the show when you were a kid. Of course. Yeah, I, was saying, yeah, I use Caesar to get a dog. I told Phyllis, I was like, I've been watching Caesar. She's like, all right, well, fine, you, have, you, you, have to you have to learn all the, the, the ways of the world first. Of course. That's Caesar's right. a big... Um, a big energy guy. That's he's right. all about the energy. That's how he's able to how he's able to control the dogs and yes. the dog behavioral. What was the energy that you got when you walked in this room? Excitement. Excitement. Okay. Just good. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate oh, good. It. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Who am I holding now? Who is this? This is Alfie. He's Alfie. 12 years old. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, am I. Yeah, he's... <laughs> Wet, sweet puppies. And there's a, there's a Pomeranian, I uh -huh. believe, underneath yeah. the coffee table. And then there's... Reese's. What's his name, Reese's? Reese's is so... the only girl on it. Oh, Reese's. hey, girl. You might have to move that mic a little closer okay. to your face. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Reese's. Um, Eye contact. We're work it's working. It's working. <laughs> it's working. Um, I was so afraid to, like, talk to the dog. Because usually when a dog comes right. in, I'm like, get out of here. Right. I just want to grab the dog. I was afraid because your famous... What's your favorite thing you say when you... No touch, no dog, no eye contact. No and I did all three when you first <laughs> yeah, I grabbed the first dog I saw. Yes, you did. Like, Why do you think I'm on 20 years on TV? Because yes. I'm repeating the same thing for 20 years. Yeah. That's you know? crazy. Was your family involved in um in with um animals? Yeah, I grew up on a farm. So yeah. by nature, yeah, it's all about the plants and the animals. Yeah. So that actually that was very important for me because I grew up uh, hearing never work against Mother Nature, always gain right. their trust, always gain their respect. And they're gonna give you a beautiful gift called loyalty. Yes. Right, so imagine hearing trust, respect, loyalty, trust, respect, loyalty. In America, you hear more about affection. You hear more about love. And then you pay somebody uh, uh, to help with, with your dog to gain trust, respect, and loyalty. 
Oh. You see what I'm I saying? I'm gonna try that with Trish next time. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. My, it's my, 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 my very own mind. I was gonna games. say there's a there's some crazy energy. <laughs> yeah, you should come in here on a on a Friday recording. There will be some crazy energy. It, it, you can apply it for humans. It's, yeah. it's the same. You have to have good energy, good philosophy, good actions. I feel very yeah. at peace with you in here. Thank you. You have a very calming yes. energy about you. Thank you. Thank How you. did you find out that you had this like ability with dogs? Like when I came to America. You yeah, know, yeah. I came I came to America. I was I used to watch it. I, this is my story uh, when I was a kid. I used to watch Lassie and Ring Ting Ting when <gasps> yes. I was a kid. Yes, the collie. So I thought that all dogs in America were just like Lassie and Ring Ting Ting. So I said, you know, when I get older, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to America and learn who, whoever trained those dogs. So I wanted to be a dog trainer. But then, then once I, I came into America, and then I saw that no one had that relationship that I thought they had. Yeah, she wasn't fetching and, six and seven Timmy from the river. Exactly, <laughs> and, okay. you know, <laughs> and that's when I said, "Oh, I can, I can do something here where I train the human and rehabilitate the dog, right?" And that's 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 how I became my make myself different from the rest of the people. Yeah, right. Because it's a guy, it's a Mexican guy in South Central that <laughs> says he trains humans and rehabilitate dogs. So yeah. that's how I became, you know. Yeah. Uh, eventually the people call me the dog whisperer. And I think uh, there's such a need for that um, because, you know, there is a, a, a language barrier, obviously, you know, mm -hmm. between the animals and the people. But it's beyond that, it's an energy shift. It's the way, you, it's the way you know, communication. It's loyalty, like you said earlier. Mm -hmm. So many things that from uh, man and dog to kind of like coexist in, in, a, in a, you know, in a fashion where it's, you know, you, should, the, you have the, um, what is it called? Command? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, you know, you're being, being like the owner. It's like that's such a hard thing to navigate. So it's like for someone that you that can bring some clarity to it, it's amazing. But that's yeah, why it's so important. Apologize. That's why it's so important to see relationship between animals because they don't really have like a language of sounds. Right. Right? It's all energy body language. So a cat can control a dog. A bird can control a dog. A horse can be a friend of a, a cat. A cow can be a friend a of bear a bear and an otter. You see, it's, <laughs> yeah. well, a, wolf. it's, a, it's a relationship. <laughs> Relationship yeah. where it has to do about energy and, bo and body language. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like it's more like Charlie Chaplin, oh, right? Yes. You Silent film. I don't. I, I mean, we go, we all understood what he said. Yeah. Right. He smiled. He sighed. So it's an, it's a universal language that has nothing to do with sound. When did you realize that was the case? Because you're all like you're all self taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, when did you realize? Mm -hmm that that was the case, that it's all energy-based, that if I just carry myself a certain way, mm -hmm. this dog will react a certain way. That's correct. Uh, later on in life, late, later on after having the show, because I, I, it just, I just went in automatic, right? I just went in automatic, and, uh, and the words were, it was be, began to, to come into my mind, like calm, confident, love, joy, yeah. exercise, discipline, affection, rule, by limitations. So I start having dreams, and the formula start coming, appearing. So you, so I was saying it. I don't know why. I know that I was able to do it, but now yeah. I'm able to teach it. So now I can teach you the right energy, the right philosophy, the right actions. Before I was just saying it, demonstrating it with the dog, but I couldn't teach it. You couldn't figure out how to tell the humans how to do it. I, my English was not good. <laughs> I was in the beginning of learning English, so my way of communicating, you know, in English was not that, you know, good. So I was able to show you with your dog. You know, and then people people say, "Oh, that guy has magical powers," and it's no, 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 no. We all have it. We all have this magical power, right? right? It's we'll, how you utilize it, and so but, time had allowed me to explain it, to break it down, to show it, to demonstrate, to help you. And now I have a, a ranch, forty three acres, and oh now you can God. come and see the land, the philosophy, and the community, and then you can That's see true. what's possible. How many know? dogs are on your ranch? Uh, it varies. Right now, my, my pack is only twenty. Twenty, mm -hmm. and they all, and when the you're, wolf pack, the, the, the wolf mm -hmm. pack. So when so how did that translate into the show? How did you get started on the show? Like, did you approach National Geographic? Had people heard of you? Was someone at the network a fan of you? And then it kind of happened. So the LA Times yeah. uh, find out about me. Hey, it's a Mexican guy in South Central. He's got the dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Mexican guy yeah. in South Central. You know, they walk 65 dogs off leash. 65, 65 dogs, dogs off leash. That's correct. And so the LA Times follow me for three days. And at the end of the day, at the end of the uh, interview, uh, the lady said, what, so what would you like to do five years from now? And I said, five years from now, yeah. right? From where I'm from, you don't plan like five yeah. years from now, We're lucky right? It's a tomorrow. luxury yeah. to plan five <laughs> years from now. So it was like, whoa. And I said, I would like to have my own TV show, 
right? Because I and people were coming to me, and and, and the and the best way I, I could teach it was radio at that time, and it was no you know social media, and and then TV. So I said I would like to have my own TV show. So she wrote it down uh, on the newspaper. The newspaper came on a Sunday. Monday was a line of producers outside waiting to find out what this show was all about. That's when the Aussie Osbournes or the Osbournes yeah, yeah, were yes. was the, the beginning, beginning of it. Two thousand four, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's when it happened. You are living proof since a young age, since you were back home, you are living proof of manifestation. I mean, you've manifested that your experience with the dogs and your connection with them and, and the ability to hone in that skill that everyone has in them and, you know, move here and have exactly what you wanted. So it's, per, it's proof manifestation does work. I was 13 years old when I said I want to be the best dog trainer in the world. I was 13 years old, right? And I did it around my mom. And so it's good to do it around people that believe in you. You know, even though I learned this from my father, uh, my father would say, "Why would you want to do that?" Because it was not a it was not a job. Yeah. Right. Especially in Mexico, to work with dogs, it was not a thing. Right. Right. And now it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's good to uh, to declare whatever you want, even though sometimes you don't know why you say it. Just listen to the voice. Listen to that good gut feeling, and uh, and don't be afraid of uh, of just say it. You know, and when they asked me about what would you like to do in the LA Times, I would like to have my own TV show. I didn't speak English. My papers were yeah. not ready. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, you You're know, like, oh shoot. But, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of obstacles in front of me. Yeah. That it would, uh, if I would have listened to that, I would listen to the fear, to the uncertainty. Yeah. But I just listened to the faith. You know, and so that part, I, I have, I have been very good about listening to that part of me. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. And money you access plus tip automatically repaid for your next paycheck. You know, this would be really nice to have, especially around the holidays, like when you need a little bit of an extra bump or you need your money early to get someone a gift or something, Earnin would be the perfect thing. So make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability and security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. When you download the Earnin app, type in Out and About Under Podcasts when you sign up. It'll really help the show out. Out and About Under Podcasts, subject to available earnings, location, daily max pay period max er, see earnin.com slash tos for details earnin is a financial technology company not a bank bank products are issued by evolve bank and trust member fdic you yeah. have been so great at communicating um, with, with with the animals i'm um, going back to talking about how the dogs they don't speak with obviously language but they show body language and things like that but you're able to connect in a way so are you able to how was your what is your process when you're talk, looking at a dog and they're trying to tell you something, you know what they're trying to tell you or if, they're, if there's trauma? Like how are you reading the dog's energy and what are you reading from? How are they communicating with you? Well, animals are very honest, so they don't hide anything. You know, they right. don't hide behind uh, anything. And so if they're nervous, they're tense, they're anxious, they're, uh, they're just going to give it to you. You know, do you, the only thing you have to do is you, that's why it's no touch, no talk, no eye contact, so important. Otherwise, ha, ah, you're going to do that. And so you're not, <laughs> that's going, what we to, do every time you're we not going to be able to listen yeah, because right. you're already saying something and you're saying, this is what I like to do with dogs. I like to be excited, right? I like to, I like to show this kind of way of loving. But when you stay quiet and calm, you, you pick up on how they feel. If they're anxious, if they're fearful, if they're tense, if they're frustrated, you feel. Because when you're with a friend and you just stay quiet, it's like you can feel your friend's energy. And the more quiet uh, you achieve silence and the more calmness you become, the more you feel the, the energy of people. Have you seen a dog that was, uh, uh, um, God forbid, a, a, a victim of abuse and that, that you knew you knew from the, how the dog was behaving and talking and then you had to confront the, the dog parents about it? Like, have you, has, can you can you tell if a dog is being mistreated? And without them obviously telling Not you. Not at that level that you're talking about. But yeah. uh, the, the mistreat and the, the people that come, they come to me is people that ring. they don't. <laughs> uh, dog fighting ring, I've done many of those. Many, many You've of those. You've seen yeah. those? Uh, yes, yes. Oh but God. those are just it's people who don't care. Right. You know, so that dog is just an automatic fighting and fighting for his life. You know, so <laughs> we, we did, have. I have we did get a lot of questions about pit bulls because we put up a thing asking, mm -hmm. um, you know, if people had questions for you. Is what are your feelings on pit bulls? I, I love them. Yeah. I love it. It's not the breed, so it's it's, it's uh, spirit first, animal second, uh, species dog breed 
number four, and then is the name. So the breed is is not the first thing, right? So my my right hands for many many years were pit bulls, Daddy and Junior, and, and so my my <laughs> we also have <laughs> my so it's not the breed, you know. It's just yeah. the, the breed is uh, the human created the Rottweiler, the German Shepherd, the pit bull, the Collie, the you know Border Collie, the Yorkshire Terrier, the, the the Pomeranians. So we create just like we create different type of cars. Right, right, and and so, but the the dog himself, that's really what the trust, respect, love is all about. That's what the loyalty, leadership, love, life is all about, right? So it's the dog, not the breed. So if you just want the dog to wear the outfit, just keep him tired, right? Because right. a tired dog will never get you in trouble. A tired dog will never get you in trouble. In LA, nine out of ten homeless people have a a pit bull. Nine out of ten. Oh my God! And and off leash. Those dogs are never getting in trouble. The people that come to me, they have a home, not the homeless. Yeah. So why the homeless dog with a pit bull are never in trouble? Because they walk a lot. Yeah. A tired dog never gets in trouble. Oh. Is there a breed that you would recommend or not recommend for a first-time dog owner? Yeah, it's not so much the breed, but the position that the dog is born in, right? So back of the pack, middle of the pack, front of the pack. So I recommend middle of the pack for anybody. Because those are the happy go luckies. Of the litter? Happy go lucky. Huh? Of the of litter? The litter. Oh, so if they're bo born, not oh, the first okay. born. That's yes, right, because there's some they are born uh, pick of the litter. So it's only one that's born pick of the litter. So in a litter of German Shepherds, only one will become a police officer. The rest are pet quality. Oh. Exactly. How so do you know only they're born, though? Oh, 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 because uh, the pick of the litter is just the biggest one, the most dominant one. He gets to the mom first. That's all they do, right? They they they, uh, they oh. drink uh, milk from the mom. So they go and <laughs> you can see, <laughs> right? And then the happy-go-lucky guys are... And then the back of the pack guys are shy. That's how we're going to pick our next boyfriends, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, I think you just described it. What are you going to pick? I'm going to have to pick of the litter. I want a middle of the pack guy. A middle of the pack fella. All <laughs> right. A happy go lucky yeah. guy. Maybe yeah. even a bottom of the pack, depending <laughs> on the guy. Speaking of packs, like I always say, for, for myself, like I am such a, I'm such an animal person and I, you know, all, every kind of species, I'm just like enthralled by animals and I got a connection with them and it just brings me so much joy. Yeah. I don't have any pets. Um, because I am so passionate about that, I think I, I'm terrified of failure okay. and of, 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 of fucking it up or something bad happening. But also at the same time, is I how do you, how would you feel? Do one, does, a, does a single dog live a happy life, or don't you think that they need a companion, another person? Because they speak the same language. I don't speak that language. So my thing is, if I have one animal, one dog by himself, he'll tr truly never like he'll be happy and, and loved, uh, but he's never going to be able to like live and have. Friends. Communication. Do you think it's smart to ha always have another s sibling or a a, a a partner for your for your dogs? But if you don't want to be a full time pet parent, you can always foster. Yeah, right. I so would give them back though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an option, right? That's yeah. To foster, so so people we can promote fostering, yes. right? Because those dogs will benefit by having the experience instead of just being in the shelter. Yes. Right. So, so at, least, real life at least coming out, love. you know, and go back. So you back. just take them until they're ready to be adopted. So it's like you can do that, or you oh, can do God. two weeks, or you can do a month, or you can foster. Yeah. You know, so that at least that dog gets the exposure, and you get the training, or you get the practice. Because a lot of times people don't have the practice; they just get the dog, but they have no idea what to do with it. You see what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. fostering a dog allows you. It's like reading different books. You, you, every dog is a book. And then you learn, you learn, you make mistakes, you do everything, you know, you make a, a decision in your mind and you, you create an agreement so you don't feel bad. Right. So you don't foster to feel bad. You foster so you can help. Yeah. But so to your answer about about one dog, if the dog is going to spend a lot of time by himself, yeah, that's going to be a miserable time, right? That's what um, I think. Yeah. I think everyone needs a companion. Yeah, yeah because they're like not chipmunks. single oriented. For that, I get a cat. The cats are uh, much more uh, capable to be by themselves because yeah. they're programmed not to be with a pack. And they're assholes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I love I, cats. Hey, listen, I just got the first cat of my life. I love you cats. Did? Yes, first cat but of my life. They are high and the, mighty. And they're, 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 they're a super good looking cat and yeah. he's controlling all the dogs. Yes. I, want, I want him <laughs> like that. Yeah, I want well, him like the, he the, just swap them. The pussy has the power. As they say. <laughs> yes. Yes. Has the power. <laughs> yeah. <is> true. <laughs> <laughs> if you let her. Yeah, <laughs> true that. So it, that's interesting. So like we both, like we said, we both want dogs in the city, but we feel bad if you have to leave it, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And so you have the question of, do you get the dog a companion? Yeah. Is there something that you've seen in your time doing this, a certain breed or a certain type of dog 
outside of, you know, pick the litter or whatever, that's good for city living. Like, you're forcing him for to tell you to get a dog is what's I'm, happening. I'm on the, I'm on the, he, the cost. Because if he tips you yeah. a breed, you're going to go out tomorrow and get one. Well, yes. I, don't, I don't think it's the breed. I, 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 I like, could I have a St. Bernard in my little apartment? Well, if it's a low level oh, energy, they don't yes. require that much of an exercise. So they're, right. they're, they're going to be uh, labeled as couch potato. So the, <laughs> so the whole point of couch potato is the low level energy. So they're ah. born that way. Right, so it has nothing to chill. do with the breed. Yeah, you know, but a lot of times people label the bulldogs as, as couch potato, but it's, it's so far from the truth, right? Because uh, uh, many bulldogs that I have rehabilitated, they just want to run, they want to swim, they want to be out there, skateboard, right? Medium to high level energy, those are not couch potato, low level energy. So make sure that if you, you know, when you go to a breeder or you go to a shelter, that you look for the lowest level energy dog in it. That's why it's good to go a oh. few times. Do breeders let you do that? Like yes. go and like look and be like, this Absolutely. is the one. Absolutely. Because I've heard should. of some people be it like the breeder assigns the dog out, which would be a little uh, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. But don't don't let those people so they're streamers. Well now we you can know? be like, I'm yeah. friends with Caesar Milan. Excuse the knowledge. me. Yeah. I'm you getting come with the knowledge, knowledge, you say, I want this specific this. Got it. You know, low level energy, back of the pack, middle of the pack, front of the pack, whatever you want. And so now you're coming with the right words. Yeah. Otherwise they're gonna give you whatever they want. What does, do you do any private training sessions? Sometimes. Can I ask you, what does it cost for a personal private training session with Caesar? <laughs> Everyone wants to know. <laughs> Most people can't afford it. Uh, it's a donation to the foundation. A donation to <laughs> the foundation. Okay. I'm gonna say $35,000. Yeah. yeah. Cause I got, I have friends who have dogs and I'm like, they'll get the oh, trainers in and right. then they won't you know, follow lady? through. And it's like, you're back to the square one, yeah. almost worse. And it's like- Well, that's throwing the money. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, if if the person is not very serious, and then yeah. it's, it's a waste of time. I, I really don't. Do you still do personal booking? Not bookings. Personal. Um, you know, sometimes. What is it called? Sessions. It's a donation. To the, donation. A donation. <laughs> donation to the foundation. Yes, the the last one we did for the uh, royal family. So they donated. Caesar, hold the phone. You know. Okay. Now you know, first you know the queen. We have him right now. Where's Kate Middleton? Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. Did she get bit by a German Shepherd? <laughs> he walks around on a leash. Which of those damn corgis? <laughs> Girl, what happened? The, the that Saudi, is oh, the Saudi, the Saudi royal family. Oh, Saudi. Even that's oh, a very wow. richer. Yes, Good I Lord. actually sent me these shoes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You've done the Saudi royal family. Mm -hmm. What was that experience? Like? Incredible, incredible. Uh, it's, it's, it's the same way I feel right now. I yeah. uh, lighting up the you Empire go, that's States. Why I flew in on a helicopter. You know what I mean? It's just it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's one in, once in a lifetime. I never thought about uh, that I was going to be here with you guys. That I was going to light up the Empire State. You know, the America was going to welcome me. Twenty years on TV. It's it's incredible, you know. I'm 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 still that kid, that yeah. kid, that dream, and you know. You made this all happen for yourself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're so I don't take it for granted. Yeah, and you deserve everything that you have. Thank you. I work. It was in your soul, and your it was it was meant to be. For yes, because you manifested it. Yeah, it's truly inspiring, and I think she's also manifesting herself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and to stay know, to gender. stay pure, and to stay you know honest, and to stay a, yeah. a good person, it's a lot of work. Because it's easy to become toxic. It's easy to be yeah. to go, go after the money, fame, power. You know, it's easier. It's, yeah. it's more tempting. It's quicker. Yeah. It's quicker. You yeah. know, to be a good human being, better human, better dog, or better human, better planet. It's more difficult. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I'm very proud of that uh, uh, of of me because I want the dogs to to follow me uh, because I am a pure human being. Yeah. Honesty, integrity, loyalty. You know, pursuit of happiness, love unconditionally, creative and responsible. And as a father, that's all I want, right? You I seem want my very kids to content and like yeah. sure of yourself. And very, like you said, there's like such a calming energy of when you walk in the room. And I take a lot of pills. And this is actually <laughs> much more soothing than my, my morning routine. Now, we got about five minutes till Nana Jones is off here. Are you done <laughs> ayahuasca? <laughs> no, I don't know. I should. I should. What'd you say? Ayahuasca. I heard about that. Oh my if goodness. If you were my shaman, I would do it. And she was there. Oh my goodness. You guys Damn, I keep misgendering the dogs. It? Oh my God, yes. What, how often do you do it? Um, what is it? It's a drink? Well, it's a tea. It's like make, a little yeah. little shot. Yeah. But you have to it's do it. You have to get it to be naked in the desert. And you just <laughs> in, the desert, in, the, in the jungle, the jungle, rainforest. <laughs> well, you don't have to. You can go to you Costa can Rica. I go to Costa Rica. Costa Rica. And read oh, yeah. Me. yeah. What is it like? The, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's to rebirth. clean your energy. So it's, it's three places you need to clean: your ancestors, your parents, and self. 
Yes. Your ancestor, your parents, and self. <laughs> I love you that. You see so what I'm much. saying? Yeah. And so that cleans your energy. The only thing you got to do, drink it, you know, go go through the uh, the ritual and you just wait and you will feel different. I encourage dog people, you know, when they're, it's very difficult for them to, to get rid of fear, for example, or, or some kind of anxiety or, or whatever thing. Hey, do what, ayahuasca. Do you just like, you trip your balls off on ayahuasca? No. No. I dance the whole time. I go dance for that. Oh Listen, god. oh my god, you dance with your spirit like like never before. Yeah, you, oh you, you, it's, it's, so your spirit loves to dance. So I need to like learn more about it. This, yeah, this is going should. on for yeah. for years. It's um the Mayans were doing it, I believe. Oh, you should. You should. I'm not, I don't want to age myself, but <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not in her past life, Nana was an Aztec. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, bringing it back to the dogs, we do what we do have a couple listener questions. If you are okay Please. with answering those, the first one. Uh, would a prong collar or an e collar be the best fix for my husband's behavior? Ha! Husband behavior. Well, <laughs> I, I don't go into tools until I fulfill the needs. Ooh. You see what I mean? I don't yeah. put tools. I don't do tool stuff until I fulfill the needs, mm-hmm. until I gain the connection, communication, relationship, yep. until I build trust, respect, love. That is the first. Uh, uh, connection that you need to have before you put it. Even when, when I put a leash, that's why when I do no touch, no talk, no eye contact, what it does, it makes the dog do nose, eyes, ears. And so the dog on his own comes and put the leash on himself. Most people, come here, come here, Stop, come here, yeah. come here. They, yeah. they chase the dog, right? So horse people do it right. Uh, horse people make the horse calm and then they put the, the rope on the horse and then they walk the horse. You see mm-hmm. it? Calmly, the horse puts the leash on himself. And dog people, come here. No, no, come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Sit, sit, sit. Here. We're going to go for a walk. So they create all this thing. Yeah. You see it? So then they say, well, the leash doesn't work. And then they get a prong collar. The prong collar doesn't work. Then they get an e-collar. You see what I mean? So it's not the tool. It's the ritual. Right. The, the way you attract it, the law of attraction. The way you're attracting this dog to come near your circle. Right? And then, and then you just start... Walking around, that's why I have the ranch now, because now I can I can allow the dog to follow me and to see if it's going to follow me or not. And what what would I do different so the dog follows me? And that's why I have the pack of dogs. So you're right about it. Is it better for the dog to have a pack of dogs? Absolutely. Is it better for us to grow up with our, with yeah. our, with our cousins and the, and our sisters and brothers? Yes, it's better. Out and About is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to ignore your social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially with social gatherings picking up after winter. What's the right amount of socializing for you? How do you recharge? Maybe you thrive around people or maybe you need some more alone time. Therapy can give you the self-awareness needed to build a social life that doesn't drain your social battery. Yeah, that could take a lot out of you, especially with a lot of traveling and this coming up in the summertime. Um, you need to take some time to yourself to kind of really reflect and protect your peace. That's my new my new motto. I'm saying I'm protecting my peace, um, and that just means allowing myself time to decompress and and um, you know take care of myself. And that's what's great about um, about BetterHelp. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire online and get matched with a licensed therapist today, and switch to therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash out and about today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash out and about. Well, how do you deal with it? Just, sorry, I know this question. No, questions. no, you're good. Yeah. How do you deal with, I want to talk about Betty, my my my, uh, my sister's yeah. dog has extreme, extreme separation anxiety. That was a question we and got. crazy anxiety, general anxiety, but especially separation anxiety where we have to give him trazodone and relax. He, has, he like freaks out even if I leave the house. Um, He'll just he'll just yip and and like and just cry the entire time and like crazy heart ha, uh, heart racing like extreme extreme separation anxiety. What are some like tools besides drugging them that you could? <laughs> besides drugging, <laughs> well, well, people ask that they're like, how, how do you feel? How, how do you, do you the feel table about Benadryl? Yeah, how do you feel about pills with dogs? And like, is there a way to like stop the separation anxiety? That was well, a question. dogs in Mexico are skinny, but they don't have psychological problems. Dogs right. in America are chunky, and I get to have a TV show. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so, so, you know, so the think people. about it, third world country dogs, they don't take drugs. Yeah. Only dogs that live in first world country. So so you have to see three things uh, for it before you, you come up with it. You have to see the human who the dog lives with, the house energy, the energy in the house, mm-hmm. and the lifestyle. Right? Okay. Why the dog develop anxiety? Is it, is it the Hobbles, energy in the probably. house? Is it the energy of the humans? Is it the energy of the life? You see it? So yeah. then you start changing that first. Right, because separation anxiety is just asking the dog. So if I walk away, I tell my dogs to just to to not 
follow me, that would that will help them understand that they don't I don't want them I don't want it to be followed. So then I practice detachment. You see what I mean? So that then they learn to 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 wait instead of not like, knowing what like to do. Like almost like cry it out like a baby. Yeah, but we also we also have to see how the human leaves. Like I'll be right back, baby. It's okay. Mommy's <laughs> Is that coming bad? Back. Terrible. Oh, that's what we do. Oh God, this is <laughs> terrible. <laughs> now we start yeah. go. Now they just ghost him. Now they just leave. They just they just walk out the door and say anything. And like, yeah, but if you feel like bad inside, so if yeah. you feel bad inside before you leave, right. he's that is know. that. Of course, of course, you know when somebody doesn't feel. Yeah, bad. the person can be mute, but you can. That's something wrong with that person. I don't like that person. You know, so so communication is 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 when people are quiet doesn't mean they're silence or they're calm. Were they silent or were they silenced? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. No, it's, it's, it's that real. That makes sense. Okay. You see, so that that we need to see. That's why I go to people's home and assess and evaluate. I, you know, I see, I see the home, the energy in the home because the home, the energy has our own home. The environment has its own home. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the people have their own uh, their own home, their own energy. So right. we have our energy. The home has the energy, and the lifestyle has its own energy. Great. So once we have those three things in place, and then then you can then we can start cleaning that part. Yeah, you know, the what's, dog is a reflection of, of what you practice. Yeah. Ah, what's the worst kind of energy, or the most like harmful kind of energy for a dog to be around? Well, so anything, that not, <laughs> any, anything that is not any anything that is not calm, classic. confident, love, joy. Yeah. And in that order, calm, confident. So calm, confident is for leadership. Love, joy is for love. You see it? So most people do, do love joy. And I come in, I share calmness and confidence, right? It says the leadership part. So the leadership part is what most people don't practice. And so it, it, anything that is outside that is going to be bad because if you feel yeah. sorry, if you feel guilty, if you feel tense, if you're not even aware that you're sharing toxic energy, right. now we're in they the can worst feel case. the energy because they, they don't speak the language. So they're, they're, they're communicating through energy There's and vibes and that's... They, you don't have to say anything. They know yeah. if, you, if you're if you're stressed out, they're gonna read it from you. That that is the the new thing finally because people before people people before used to believe that dogs only feel the love. Right. And and now people are saying, do dogs feel nervousness? Oh, they yeah. feel anything. Yeah, any kind of energy you're feeling, they're feeling. They don't know why you're tense. They just know you're tense. Right. Right. If you're angry, they don't know why. They just know you are not feeling well. You see what I mean? So yeah. it's not just love that the, an animal is capable to feel. We're, we're the same. We're a part of the animal world, right? So we have our instincts for that purpose, for that reason. So we can feel energy, you know, so we can do things instinctually. But most people do things intellectually. My clients are very smart, but they're not using their instincts. That's interesting. Uh, one of the questions we got um, a lot was, how do I get my jog dog to stop jumping on me? That's excitement. Yeah. That's excitement. And uh, that's ex that's why I tell people, no touch, no talk, no eye contact. When you meet a dog, make sure that you nurture calm surrender, and then you give affection, and then you trigger excitement. I'm not saying not to be excited with the dog, but also build a foundation of calm surrender before you go into happy-go-lucky or excitement, you know? So the thing is, the person have to understand how they became the person who taught the dog to do that because dogs by nature don't know how to jump on people right you know they they don't know they so don't know the dogs jump. jump on you just turn your body away no 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 so you can turn body away if the excitement is zero to five if the excitement is five to ten you can't turn the body away because then you are then you're behaving weak ah. you see it so they're so gonna keep you chasing do? you so what do you do then you just walk it down like you well, you, you can wait it out until the dog uh, receives no attention to that excitement. So you're not ignoring the dog. You're ignoring the energy of that it's dog. It's like when you come home that from moment. work or something, have it jumping on you with yeah, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, there's the no touch, no dog, no eye contact. And you just let him go. You let him get yeah, a lot of Yeah, you let him drain. You let him drain. And then they realize that you're not going to pay attention to that type of uh, to that type of energy. And then the dog comes down. Once the I dog comes like down, then you reward that's the oh. state of mind that you're looking for. Most people don't reward calmness or a dog listening, which is calm surrender. So when you are in a calm surrender state, your body is relaxed, your mind is open. That's smart. Flip you see the it? That's the only way you yeah. can learn. To reward them when they're calm and being yeah. and being gentle and relaxed and except like, you know, so if you do this, then you get this. So it, zero to five, you can turn away. 
Are, Zero five, you can ignore. Yeah, you can just walk away. And then but anything five above to ten, that, you have to address it. And how do you address it? By waiting, or like that's when I go. Shh, hey, how'd you come up with that sound? Oh, my mom. Your mom. Yeah, my mom. <laughs> my mom. Yeah. That's a very Latino thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, most most moms in, in Mexico, they're gonna. Yeah. Shh, hey. <laughs> we both jump. Right? <laughs> exactly. Let's go, let's go exactly. Get nervous. Yeah. Exactly. Get nervous. That that's means you, most, you broke rules by the limitations. Yeah. That's your most famous like sound. That's your like uh what do you he call it? He was doing it all afternoon. Yeah. I do it to Joey when he gets going. <laughs> I know. I, I thought know. it was overeating and she's yeah. <laughs> 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 down that casserole girl. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's <laughs> he brings a casserole to her. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Um we got another one here. Some of these are like Kind of specific. You might have to like see them to know. This is I own a German Shepherd who recently started growling at us when he comes in the house. We don't know why. Do you know what this means and how we can stop it? Well, growling can come from um, not trusting, or growling can come from not respecting. We we have to we have to find out what kind of growl. Because if it's a or er, er, right, <laughs> yeah. it's a er like this. That's a no respect. Er is is no trust. I'm going to use that in a sentence today. <laughs> Which one? Er? Well, yeah, the pants are pisses me off. <laughs> yeah. So th they have to understand what is it? Is the dog not trusting them? That's what yes. is growling. Or the dog is not respecting? That's what is growling. Because it's, 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 it's a different way to address e each one. Yeah. Right? One can make a dog flight, and the other one can make a dog fight. Oh, that's so interesting. Fight, flight, avoidance. Fight, See, flight, avoidance. That's right. Those three things, That's the, those, those are the three state of mind you don't want from a partner or from a dog. Mm. You don't want them to fight, flight, avoid. You want them to come surrender, happy, go lucky, or come confident. See, those are the three good state of mind that you want in any relationship with a human or with a dog. But with a dog, you don't want the dog to be your calm, confident, because I mean, he's your pack leader. You want the dog to be your happy, go lucky, calm, surrender member of the family. Trusting. Trust, respect. That's that's a perfect dog, by the way. This what you what you're seeing right yeah. here is calm, surrender dog. You never met them. Right, and they, they were came so in adopt. When they came in, they came and adopt, and and they and they they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is well, I surrender. did slip him a trouser. Full disclosure. That's well, you're we really just gotta good be at it. This you're really good at it. Right, bitch. <laughs> right, bitch. <laughs> That Look was, this. It, was a, it was a it was in a sugar pill. Sugar. <laughs> this is from um, my do you have this is the last question we'll do? Do you have a pe one piece of advice for a new dog owner? A piece of advice for a new dog owner uh, to to begin to learn speak uh, be surround yourself with people who understand energy, who understand good philosophy, who understand good actions. Those yeah. three things. It's very important that you surround yourself with with a community of people who practice the same thing, right? Because you want to be part of a pack, you know? You want to be part of a, a, a dog people who do it right. Because right. there's a lot of dog people who do it wrong, you know? And thanks to them, I have a show. But <laughs> but but at, in, like, in, you know, uh, if I'm going to tell something to a, a brand new person, just surround yourself with people who do mm -hmm. the right energy, the right philosophy, and the right actions, you know? Yeah. People that understand the true meaning of what it, me what it means to be a pet parent. Right, because it's about loyalty, it's about leadership, it's about love, and it's about life. Most people think it's about love, but without loyalty and leadership, you don't have a relationship. You get what you put into it. Right. I think you if, you're putting, if you're putting if you're putting your emotion into it and putting hard work into building that relationship and earning that respect, you'll get a, a, a more rewarding dog. You want to trust, respect, love. Yeah. You know, people have loving relationship but no trust. Reason? You can love somebody doesn't mean you trust them. Right. You can love somebody no, doesn't mean you respect to the, them. You're preaching to the choir. You, right? you see it. <laughs> so yeah. you want trust, respect, love, and so once you understand that, and then you can commit to it. And then you, you have an agreement, you agreement, commitment, follow through. There is a formula for being successful bad parent. You know? How do you show a dog loyalty? By like, buying is that by like walking them at the same time every day? Is it by mm -hmm. like... Believe it or not, the way I show the spirituality, because to me, honesty, integrity, loyalty has to do with spirituality, right? And so the, the, the silence that I share is, is to is to be grateful of our spirits getting together that day Hi. and then the instincts how do I, how do you show a dog leadership right well follow play explore and that's where you, just when you take a dog for a walk or play with the dog or explore with the dog but never play or explore with a dog without the walk first so your thing is you got to exercise them before anything you got to take them on a walk well a fish have to swim and a bird have to fly a dog have to walk <laughs> a man's you know gotta I mean? eat that's true. so so it's it's what they will do without you Right. So once you come into their picture, you are responsible of their needs. 
You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So love is something that we bring into the picture and they will definitely appreciate as uh, uh, if, if we give it to them once they work for it. Otherwise, my clients are dog lovers. Right. But why they can't control a dog? With love. You know, I'm pretty sure you have a relationship with just you give love, but trust and respect was not built. Right. So mm -hmm. it's not just about Do you want love. to ask him about good? <laughs> <laughs> right? It's a trust and respect. And so we yeah. have to build <laughs> okay. all the pillars. Yeah. Right? Trust, respect, love. Love is a reward. Love is a gift. So make sure you give it once you have trust, respect. So that way you nurture trust, respect. And there's not a particular, I know you're you're not a breed, you don't favor one breed over the other. There's not a particular breed you think people should avoid or people should not avoid when they're first getting a 33 year old single men in New York City that may well, or may I'm not 30, be in this well, I'm room. Well, I'm 34. So. Oh, 34. <laughs> but listen, like Belgian Malinois is it, not for beginners. It's hmm? like getting a Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, <laughs> it happened. German, he did it. It German happened. Shepherds, <laughs> yeah. Rottweilers, you know, they're working type, pointers, Bishlas, yeah. Weimaranas, you know, those are sporting types. And those are those are for people they have had at least one or two dogs in their life before they went into the major leagues. Yeah. You know, Las Absos is a good beginner. Samoids are my favorite dog. Uh, Samoid is a, is is a working a dog. dog. Oh, it's a working, working dog. dog. Yeah, it's a oh, sled I dog. To work. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's a sl so they, they have this need of pulling. They have, or if you don't want them to pull, put a backpack on it. At least let them carry something. Right. You know, just go to REI and just get a backpack for a dog and let the dog carry something. And that'll calm them down. Well, she's going to have a wig on. So. Listen, they, f they need a job. They need a purpose. Right. You see, so having a beautiful home and just having food and everything, that's awesome. That's a good luxury. But if I they didn't earn it, clean. the energy is still there. Right. So it's important for, for us to give him some kind of job, some type of job, some type of challenge. You have to challenge the body. You have to challenge the mind. And then money, fame, and power, it will be an add-on to it. You know, like you can afford uh, uh, the best food in the world. Oh, that's, an, that's a luxury. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can you, afford a halo um, collar as you well. You can afford yeah. a halo Let's collar. Talk about, well, <laughs> let's talk about, well, I think uh, most people with a dog can afford a can halo collar. Can I try collar. this on? Yeah. Because this is a, a, medium uh, this is a GPS uh, dog fence, mm -hmm. right? And it's just all built oh. in around the collar. And before the show, we were talking a little bit um, about this. I remember we wanted one, uh, an electric fence growing up That's way right. back in the day. But it was a big to do because you got to dig up the yard, you got to put in the actual wires. Well, they get wires, shocked. Or, God forbid, you know, something happens to the wire, you got to replace the whole thing. If this was only around when I had a dog, you, how do you do it? You create the fence on your phone and. You create, you can create yeah. fence and at the beach, oh, anywhere how you want. Sure, yes. It's anywhere you want to go that you, you can create a fence and you can create it way before you arrive. Okay. You know, but the whole point of uh, the halo color is 11 million dogs get lost in America every year. 11 million. This is right. Beautiful. Most of them, you know, he was saying about the shock, it, it, most of them will get killed by a car. Oh. You see it? So, yeah. so the, the fencing part or the deterring part is, is just a tool that allows dogs to stay inside the inside the, uh, the the your house you know and so it's, so but it's not only the uh, the uh, sensation part of it you can use the sound the vibration but I teach you how to do it right but you know before you even put the tool on it you have to walk the dog you have to have trust respect love right you know so yeah. th so the tool reminds your dog the rules bound the limitations so this is just when you're not paying attention this is this is your helper, so which most do you, people don't. How do you, like when you put the uh, traditional electric fence and you have the flags all around the yard and it's like, that's the dog's visual cue to know. So if you're going somewhere new with a dog and you want to create a fence, how does the dog know and how do you tell the dog mm. where they can go and where they can't? Perfect can? question. Look. <laughs> I thought I was getting he zapped. He just got zapped. <laughs> <laughs> and you like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's getting zapped in his I'm panties right now. This yeah. is very, I gotta say, this is very high tech. This is like for it's rich dogs. This is, this is like a no, very for everyone. beautifully made of... It's oh. like what, six hundred bucks for this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's affordable. I'm just I remember back that it's yeah. luxurious. Twenty years ago, with my dog, an electric fence was three times as much. So you can't put a price on your dog's safety. Freedom. You can't. Freedom. Freedom. Listen, yeah. the, the easiest way to do it is you you do this with food around, food or um, some kind of really stinky stuff, right? Because you want the nose to make the dog go Trish to whatever you don't want him to go. You understand? Say that, explain that. Okay. So it, so we, this is food, okay? Let's okay. pretend this is food. And the dogs are not here. Yep. That, 
Then we put the food on the on the ta- on the table. Boom, food is on the table. Oh. Well, by the time the dogs come in, the nose is going to bring him to it. So then, by by before the dog comes in, we put we put the um, the vibration for it. So be, way before the dog gets close to the food, it vibrates. So now he believes that food has a vibration. Okay. So way before you go outside, you do this inside. So you're reverse training essentially. Instead yes. of them getting zapped when they go out, when they go to where they're supposed to be, they got a vibration. Because you don't want them. the flag to be what tells the dog. You want the nose to tell the dog not to go. Ah. The the uh, the pee of deer. That's what I say. Stinky stuff. Because when a dog chases stuff, it's the it's deers, it's rabbits, is is squirrels, is you know real animals. Yeah. So you want to bring that scent, and that scent is gonna remind it's gonna remind the brain to the nose. So the no the dog is gonna smell. No, I'm not gonna go to it because it has a vibration in it. Right. So, but uh, the element of surprise is very important. You see it? So that's why I teach you how to do it right. The dog is tired, then you surprise him. The dog has the vibration, and then from that point on, it becomes the imprint. And then from that's the, the center place is where they so go. so smart and well thought out. You know what I mean? It's, it's not just enough. about like, it's about it's, it's right. instilling his, what he's, his teachings and behavioral um, affirmations in with this technology. Yeah. And it's interesting you're doing it reverse too. Yeah. Because I've seen people where they have the, the thing in the yard and they're like, dog's got to learn. Grab the dog by the collar, run it over, dog gets zapped. Boom, dog doesn't that, go, but the dog's terrified. That's a fist, it that because it's physical. Right. It wasn't mental. The nose never understood. Somebody just set him up. Right. You nose see what I'm saying? Never lies. And, and so so then the, they not only becomes afraid of that, but it also becomes doesn't trust the human because the human pushed them into it. And this you don't want to be part of it. Can you do tr- can you tr- set this up traditionally like in a yard? Say someone's not going anywhere. They're like we got a big yard. Can you just map it out and stick a bunch of flags in the ground and then that's that? You can stick, uh, you can stick the flags. The flags are for the eyes. Right. And that's more for you than it is for the dog. God. What is for the dog is the nose. Because oh, what about God. if you have a blind dog, which I just did a dog that is blind, right? So that dog can't see no blind, no, no flags, right. but it can still smell and chase and get out of the house. So you're rewarding instead of punishing. Uh, yes, I'm teaching yeah. through the nose. Ah, right, so vinegar. It's taking me a minute to catch Vin- up to everything. Listen, that's going on vinegar. Here, yeah. Just put vinegar into uh, in any ha- any dog's uh, uh, environment, and that dog will stay away. It will repel. So you want the nose to tell the dog not to go near it. Yeah, mm. that's it. It's the nose of the dog that you want to teach. What would you put around your apartment to keep yourself from leaving the house? <laughs> keep myself to keep myself from leaving the house? Just companionship. Yeah. Right, right in the dead center. A, a calming, loving voice to talk to, if we can find that. That's so funny. This, I'm Let's manifest you, them. Manifest. Yes. Yeah. This is like, this is genius. And where can people buy this? Halo.com? Halo.com, right? Halo.com. This is such a great Halo idea. Collar.com. Halo Collar. Halo Collar. Com. Ladies and gentlemen. And everyone in the studio audience is getting one today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get a collar. You yeah, get a collar. Exactly. <laughs> this is so crazy. I got one more question before we let you go because yes. I know you're busy. What breeds. <laughs> what, shh. Oh my God. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> what breeds do Joey and I remind you of? Okay, uh, Irish setter. setter. Me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that on. Does he have a, a long beak? Okay, you know what? Irish setter for her, mm-hmm. from him, sorry. Mastiff. Me. Mastiff. <laughs> a bull mastiff? Bull mastiff. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's cute, that's yours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what is, no, I see, oh, if this dog's fat, brace yourself, yourself, brace yourself. If this dog's overweight, I'm gonna this. <laughs> oh, no, he's cute. What do you mean? He's the cutest. Oh, I see it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. oh absolutely. Hi, Twiny. What about Vinny? Vinny, a stallion. You're oh, so lucky you got to hold this dog the whole show. I'm so jealous. Well, we held each other. A schnauzer. A schnauzer. I love a schnauzer. Yeah. Are you but it's me? not just like what the thing. It's like the vibe. Know? Yeah. You know, it's the vibe. What kind of vibe does an Irish look? Look, see, that's, that's, that's right Vinny. Vinny. That's right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Diego yes, to be a strip a chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, our guy Diego's doing something else. He's right a little now. he's a little and spunky. Yeah, that's so funny. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate thank it. You, I could talk to you for days I know. about thank everything. You. Thank you. you can leave the kids here with us. Go to the yeah. Empire State Building. Is that today's the Empire State Building? Yes. Very good. Well, congrats. That's what a huge deal. Right? Yeah. I'm I can see it from out. my house. I'm gonna look for you up. I'm up there. Are they, are they gonna turn it into Orange, a- blue, yellow. I'm gonna take a picture of it tonight. Please. Yeah. Please. So you went from the royal family. 
to the Saudi royal family, mm-hmm. to us. To out and about. <laughs> to, out and about. about. <laughs> to the top of the Empire State. To the top of the Empire State. <laughs> Girl, you know, you're really picking your battles today. It's got to go down before it goes up. The Caesar, thank you so thank much. You thank you for really, coming. It was, fun. it was fun. It was so much fun. Thank Appreciate you. it very right. much. Oh, what a dream. Thank, thank you. I'm your new mommy.